You're listening to Haunted Hour, real ghost stories from real people. Hello everyone and welcome to Haunted Hour. Yay. Yeah, we're live every Friday. Yeah, my name is Indra Sahib. And I'm Noel Boyd. Welcome to Haunted Hour. <laughs> How are you, bro? Hey, man, it's been a busy week. Uh. Every every week is a busy week. Uh. Yeah. Why? Uh? I don't know. It's good, right? I think we are just living in Singapore. That's why. Uh. Yeah. I mean, in <laughs> Singapore, we are, we are always very, very, very Fast busy. Fast pace, you know, a lot of adrenaline, day in, day out. Yeah. But it's always good to uh, take a step back and calm yourself down by watching Haunted Hour. <laughs> I, I don't know whether we can calm you down, though, because some of the stories that oh, yeah, our true, guests true. share, you mm-hmm. know, Uh, somebody messaged me on Facebook the other day mm-hmm. and then was telling me that they would rather watch the replay like anytime they want in the daytime mm. <laughs> rather than watch this at night. Wow. Yeah. Maybe we should try to uh, play this uh, episode right like, in the middle of the night. Like midnight. At the stroke of midnight. Yeah. Or the witching hour like at about three o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How is your week? Has, has been so far, man? Um, well, Ups and downs, you know, that's life. But, um, you know, you focus on the positives. Mm. So one of the positives, you know, I found out that my book is now available mm. um, with our national libraries. Wow. Right? So it's available in 14 libraries island-wide. Mm. Nice. Yeah. So, so, so that's proud, really awesome. Huh? Are you proud of that? Of course. You should be. Huh, yeah. You should be. But, you know, the only reason why this is possible, mm. right, uh, it's because of this lady, right? Her name is Komala Subramaniam. Wow. And she wanted to read my book mm. and then she went to the library and she checked and they didn't have it. Mm. And so what um, she did was uh, she wrote in to them. I, I think there's a link that you can click mm. and then you can request a book. Mm. So she did that and then it got approved. Wow. Yeah. So not just at the library, I think nearest to her house, but then it's libraries all across Singapore. Nice. Yeah. So so that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then uh, today I launched this thing because I love to cook. Mm. Right, and I used to cook in a professional kitchen. So mm. now I'm gonna do stuff for home delivery. So if you love like chita stuff wow. like chili crab and all, yeah, um, that's available. And then mm. yeah, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the pre-show that you know happens before we we go live, yep. and it's got the menu and all. Or add me as a friend on Facebook mm. because I just posted it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> So so we have a very uh, awesome episode coming right up, yeah. Yeah. Tonight. Um, yeah, we we got a a very special guest, and mm. I'm so happy that he's here in the studio because every time when he tells me his stories, right, wow. I go like, wow, wow. So today you go you're gonna go wow at home or wherever you're watching us from. Yeah. His name is Christopher Hiddick. Yeah. Yeah. And he's here. Welcome to Haunted Hour. Hey, yeah, guys. Glad <laughs> to be here. <laughs> How are you? Ah. It's like what I said, busy, busy, busy. Busy, yeah. Yeah. Wow, nice, nice. Hold on, I'm having a bit of problem What? with my monitors. I can't monitor. hear like, you all now. Oh, okay, okay. Now, now it's okay. Ah. Huh. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you buy cheap stuff off Shopee. <laughs> this, this is what happened when we go live doing paranormal podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. It's always like that. Okay, now, now it's okay. I just got to try not to move. <laughs> It doesn't help when I feel like. 
like going to the toilet. Mm. I peed just now, but I didn't feel like I need to pee again. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a one-hour show. <laughs> and yo, man, and yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need to give a shout out to these people called Get a Live Seafood. Mm-hmm. Um, if you guys want seafood at home, if you don't want me to cook and you want to cook yourself, you can get seafood from them. <laughs> they got uh, mud crabs. They they Canadian oysters are awesome, man. It's like the size of, of your palm. That's how big they are, mm. right? And and it's fresh. And then they got stuff like tiger prawns. They got asahi clams. So visit uh, their website. They have a website and also they are on Instagram and also Facebook. Mm. So it's Get Alive Seafood. Yeah. Yeah. If you are an awesome person, mm. I would like you to share this post now so it reaches out to more people. Like and share. If you know someone that was from Nisun Camp, tag them in the comments. If you know someone that's living in Pungo, especially near like Pungo N, because mm. we're going to talk about that today, you can also um, uh, tag them. What else are we going to talk about? Yeah, we're going to talk about actually a lot of stuff today. Yeah, so true. Just, just share, just share this on your wall and then we get to reach out to more people. You know, who knows, maybe somebody in, in your contact list loves paranormal like you. Mm. Yeah. And uh, for those who love this content of ours, right? Please do not uh, forget to buy us coffee. Yeah. Uh, you all can uh, click the link above here. No, here. No, there. Here. There, 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 we don't get a chance to have dinner because we come in here by about 7 p.m. and then we are running through sound, running through uh, everything, the program for the day. Mm-hmm. But you get to buy us virtual coffee. Yeah. yeah. That would uh, feed us. Yeah. <laughs> that would feed us. Feed us, feed our families. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. What else? Uh? I think uh, let's let's move on to the show, man. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's move on to the show. Uh, do you want to read any of the, the comments? Oh, yeah. Uh, we have a few comments uh, from our uh, viewers right now because I'm, I'm trying to moderate the comments. Are you doing a good job? Uh, not really because, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we need to hire more people. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we can't afford that. You know, we need... We need advertisers. Hey, if you know someone that wants to advertise on our show, come mm. on, help help a brother out. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, help us out. Tell them about us. Very reasonable rates, and then mm. we do everything we can. If you want us to, even if you have a restaurant and you serve good food, you want us to eat while we do the show. Mm. Yeah, but just make sure it's halal. Yeah, because Indra needs that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a a, a comment from uh, Aisha Pandi. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, sorry, Aish Aish Pandi. Sorry. Uh, I love paranormal. Thank you. Uh, and we also have comment from my friend Hisham says that he fought a Pontianak before. What? We haven't we haven't started with our topic yet, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I you think fought. I think they all uh, the, uh already hype up. You know. Yeah. Go, going going live right now. <laughs> <laughs> Azrin Shah. Wow. Okay, we oh have my. A, we have old a, friend. Yes, we have a, a lovely brother here, Azrin Shah. How are you, my brothers? Thank you. We are all good. We are good, bro. Noel, Noel is on his uh, second coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is number four for the day. <laughs> wow. And then the wife is watching now and she's like shaking her head. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's about it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, let's go on to um, the segment that we have called terrifying trivia mm. um, today we're going to talk about a place in the United States and it's called Gettysburg mm. uh, and this place is one of the most haunted locations in the United States and it's been plagued by almost 150 years of intense paranormal activity wow the this little town was the site of the bloodiest battle in the Civil War it is estimated that anywhere between 46,000 and 51,000 men were wounded, killed, or went missing during uh, the battle. Mm-hmm. Now, the first place in this location is called the Daniel Lady Farm. Mm-hmm. Now, the farm was used as an army field hospital, and soldiers who suffered from artillery wounds were uh, sent to this farm to recover. And um, a lot of them, you know, they lived their final moments of their lives right at this place. So it said that the goals of a general and his soldiers of 10,000 still haunt the farm. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
And then another place, um, it's an inn. Now, this inn has got spectacular views of the countryside and it sometimes gives visitors a terrifying glimpse of life after death. Mm. Located on Hospital Road, what a name of a, for a road, uh, the inn served as a hospital during the day, uh, during day two, sorry, of the battle. And the owner has collected dozens of stories and photos of a guest's ghostly encounters. Now, we are looking mm. at some of the photos here on screen, right? So, these have been taken by um, uh, Paranormal Buffs. It's been taken by, by, by tourists. So, now you can see mm. one. It looks like somebody that's hiding behind a tree, right? Wow. Do you have any more to show? Yep. This one? Yeah. So, oh. this fellow is like slightly translucent. Mm. Any more? I think that's about it, man. Really? Mm. That's all I gave you? Yep. No, I think there's one more. Uh, which one? This one? And then? Yeah. Ah, mm. this one. Yeah, so later we're going to show you a video uh, about, about this, right? So this is in our segment called the real or fake segment. Nice. And then we want you, the visitor, the visitor. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Singapore. <laughs> Uh, Too much coffee. Man. You, 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 should see, you, you should see Noel's uh, expression, man. <laughs> That's why I'm pulling him. Uh, <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, there's a brain fart. And, and, for, and for those who have questions, right, uh, please do post your question uh, at this early stage of this episode uh, because I think it's important because we're going to read up your question on uh, at a later part of our podcast. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so you, the viewer, <laughs> are going to decide whether this is real or fake, right? It's from um, the location we just spoke about. Mm. Do you have the, the video on standby? Let's go. Real Let's go. or fake? All right. So this guy is mm. obviously driving and then he's moving along and then you see these old artillery guns and then oh you God. see this translucent. Uh, um, this apparition that appears, right? So mm. he appears to be running. Maybe this is a ghost soldier. He's still in battle, so he's trying to um, dash through. Yeah, mm. look at that. Oh, okay, man. so then he dashes through. I think we're gonna go one more time. This time, it's gonna be slower. Wow. And there, there you go. go. There you go. Wow. Yeah. Oh, scary as shit, man. Wow. Are we allowed to say shit on the show? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can we? I don't know. You already did it. So but it's a it's a it's a family rated show, right? Yeah. <laughs> there are children watching this, oh, guys. Sorry, sorry, Please. sorry, sorry. If, if Ramona is watching with her sons, right? What are the sons' name? Uh, uh, Daniel and Martin. Oh. Yeah. If they are watching, I'm I'm so sorry. Yeah. I think we should rehearse first, uh, on this part. No, <laughs> there's nothing to rehearse. Just don't use vulgarities. Don't use okay, words okay. like that. Point okay. noted, Mr. Noel. Okay, so the question is, mm. is it real or fake? Uh, you be the judge, man. Yeah, you so the while, while the viewers are uh, uh, commenting, let's go to Chris. What do you think? Um, it looks quite real to me. Mm. Um, I mean, something that I have seen stuff like that before. So, wow. Yeah, wow. pretty real. Okay. Mm. Like, man, man we, we are living in an age where uh, video editing can be possible, right? In terms of the ghost... Uh, ghost features uh, or translucent figures but going back to the history of this place it just give you the chills yeah man a lot of lost souls in that very uh, place yeah what's, what's your take on that Chris okay um, now a lot of people can do a lot of editing yeah unless you haven't encountered it before mm. you take one look at it and you will tell yourself this is something I've seen before mm. um the thing is, when you encounter spirits out there, there's no such thing as you see a full figure, you see a face, mm. you see hands, you see legs. It just goes whoosh. Whoa. Right past you. Split second, eh? Yes. Mm. Sometimes yeah. a little bit longer, but most of the time, they're gone within two, three seconds. They just mm. fly right past you. Wow. Yeah, and that I will agree. scare the living daylights out of you. True, yeah. true. Yeah. I think this kind of thing, uh, it, it can't be fake. For me, I think when, when I look at the video, uh, going back to the history, because I, I, I love to understand the history of the place. Yeah. Right? So I think that this, this video is real. Yeah, I, mm. I think it's real too. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just based on experience, on also, also what I've seen, mm -hmm. right? A lot of times, the, you know, they don't appear in their full form. But, um, you know, going back to places like Labrador Park, right? Uh, it's all the sudden deaths 
that that happened. You know, that's why there are a lot of ghosts around because a lot of times they don't know that they're dead, mm. right? So when we did something at Labrador Park, uh, you can find our video under the uh, Ghost Watch series. Mm. Uh, we were at Labrador Park and then we were trying to communicate with uh, whatever that was there, and then we started talking to this ghost called Bob, mm. right? So he replied to us through the K two meter. And then he kept repeating his name, Bob. Mm. So we could rule out like, you know, uh, any interference. And then when we asked him, do you know that he's dead? He said, no. He still thinks he's alive. Wow. He still thinks that he's protecting the fort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I think that's why a lot of people get disturbed at night, especially when you go to a place like that. And then you start making out and you know, you don't, you don't respect the land. Yeah, true. Yeah. And true. then these, these ghosts or these entities, mm. they will pretty much um, try to, to disturb you as much as they can. Correct. Yeah. That's my take on it. Wow. Um, do you see any of the the comments? Okay. Um, uh, whether people are saying real or fake? Okay. We let me show some of the comments here. Okay, because I have to go. Okay. Um. Okay. S- Sylvester. S- uh, okay. Uh, Sylvest. Sylvest. Oh, okay. His hmm. name is Sylvester. Uh, Sylvester. Okay. Uh, mentioned that real. Uh, wait now. Uh, because I have to uh, go back and forth uh, <laughs> the interface. Bro. Okay, so I say real saw something like this on my CCTV at Changi. Ah. Wow. Hey, um, I just got the notification that mm. uh, Sylvester bought us five coffees. Hey, thank you, Sylvester. Yeah, and <laughs> this other person, there's no name, bought us one one coffee, and mm. then earlier today at five thirty seven, this another person bought another coffee. So that's mm. seven for today. Wow, nice. Okay, we have another comment here from da- Daniel Ali. Uh, damn, that's... Okay, damn, damn, I think we can see it. Uh, damn. Uh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> damn, that's damn right scary though. For me, it's real. It mm. can't possibly be fake though. So yeah, uh, likewise, we, we in the studio here, all three of us agree that this, this the, the video that has been shown is real. Yeah, but this one popped up a minute ago by mm. Su Hian. Uh, says that it looks like water droplets moving across the windscreen. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. So here, no? Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, correct. Looks like water droplets, yeah. And Chris, your son, Alex, says, Hi, puppy. Hey. hey, hey. Hi, boy. <laughs> Alexander. Enjoying the show? <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of my father. <laughs> of course, man. Chris is an awesome guy. <laughs> Okay. Anything else? I think there's a. I think going back to the latest uh, comment, let me go browse through the latest comment. Uh, oh, uh, Sylvester uh, comment. Uh, enjoy your coffee, Noel. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Mm. Uh, Panji says, uh, Panji was on our show last week. Mm. It's a lost soul who's still fighting the war. Mm. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, true. True. Mm. Uh, Muhammad Hafiz Ismail commented here. Uh, I think he's training for IBBT. <laughs> How can you make that kind of comment, man? <laughs> I don't know. But but maybe. You never know, right? You never know. Yeah, but it's a war zone. It's not a training zone. It's a war zone, right? So it's a previously known as a war zone. People died there. Yeah, yeah. thousands and thousands. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe he saw the car coming. He wanted to hitch a ride or what? <laughs> Take grab, huh? Ah, grab. <laughs> oh, that is known for Uber. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Uh, anyway, I, I feel that wars are pointless mm. and wars should never, never, ever exist. But, you know, humans are such. Yeah, true. Right? Mm. Yeah. But a lot of people suffer during war time. Uh. Of course, man. The, the innocent. Yeah, the innocent, you know? yeah, yeah. True, true. The innocent always suffer. Mm. And a lot, of, a lot of lost souls. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, post, post-war stage, you know? Yeah, I mean, mm. like, you know, this country is victim of it mm. right everywhere you go like Singapore is supposed to be one of the most haunted places in the world yep. but that's only because we are so small mm. right and the Japanese occupation stuff happened all over the island which we're going to talk about later yeah. about Pungo mm. so Chris um, can you tell us how old you were when you had your very first experience I think I was about 13 14 around there Mm. Previously, I used to get like uh, very bad vibes, you know, get sudden chills and you just don't feel comfortable. But I see. my very first encounter was actually around that age um, when I was fishing at night in Pungo. Mm. Yeah. And um, it was from then on mm. that um, 
either it was a gift or it was a curse. I didn't know, but you know, I I could see things, but not like some other people, you know, mm. who see it constantly. Mine comes and goes, comes and goes. If I have a bad day, that's mm. when I see these guys. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, what's the 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 scariest one when you were when you were young? Like the scariest experience? Okay, the scariest one I was um, was in Pongo. Mm-hmm. Um, my relative's house was very close by to the beach, mm. so I was just you know hanging out at the beach and all that. And all of a sudden, I heard crying noises. And as I looked far towards my left, what I thought I first saw was a line of people walking on the water. Wow. wow. And um, as I look mm. closely, it just started to get closer to me. Mm. Uh, they were about maybe a hundred meters away. Mm-hmm. It was a chain gang. All these soldiers in chains. Wow. Just, uh, you could see figures. I mean, you can't see a human form. You could see like a shadowy figures mm. just walking across the waters. And you could also sort of figure out there were soldiers there with mm. guns. And they were just walking in. There were oh, people crying. scary, man. Wow. You know, and that was the first time. And, and that freaked me out. I mm. just ran back into mm. the house and uh, mm. I stayed indoors for a while. Mm-mm. Yeah. So, how, how was it like post Post experience of that. Uh, to be honest, I didn't mm. dare go out at night after that. For quite some time, For like. quite some time. Mm. Uh, once it got dark, I went. I stayed indoors. But um, then, but staying indoors didn't keep you away from them because I started to hear things. Yeah. Wow. Right. So um, it escalated to an, to other things. Eh? Yeah. It just it just came to a point where okay, you can see it. You can see it as long as you don't disturb me. You know that's all. Mm. I I came to that point that. I'm not here to disturb you. Yeah. So, please leave me alone. Oh, scary man. Um, do was this passed down like from a family member? Do you know whether any of your your relatives can see as well? There might be one or two of them, if I'm not wrong. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, um, I, I used to hear their stories when I was growing up. I mean, they used to scare the daylights out of me. <laughs> um, and to make it worse, my uncles used to wear these white blankets over their head and put powder on their face, red lipstick, and wake me up middle of the night and make me jump and run out of the house. <laughs> right, right. It's supposed to be a prank, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I, I recall, you know, when I think I was in my teens, maybe like fourteen or fifteen years old. Yeah. Uh, we used to cycle to uh, track seventeen. Right. This is. Uh, at Pongo mm. and in the daytime you know it feels a little eerie then at night if you know we're there fishing for like hours and hours oh man the 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 energy and the vibes like you know that would freak me out because back then I used to be very afraid of ghosts mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. are you familiar with like the track 17 area well definitely man. I spent many years in uh, Pongo 17th mm. Avenue which mm. was also known I think if I'm not wrong it was t- track 21 Mm. But then they, they they transformed the name to uh, 17th Avenue. So uh, you had the private houses right at the end, which is about maybe half a click away from mm. the main road. Mm-hmm. And then on both ends, you had the chicken farms and, you know, the kampongs that were there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe about one kilometer away from Pongo Point. Mm. Right. And okay. um, that is uh, Spook Central. Uh, I lived there. I used to take the bus back home. Sometimes I come back late from camp, late from mm. work, and it's a long walk inside. And it's just my love, <laughs> the street lights go off. Wow! You know, and you're walking in darkness, and you hear things. You hear people calling you. Mm. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden, the dogs from left, right, and center start howling. Mm. Oh man! You know, and that just <laughs> adds to the fantastic ambience. To make you want to just run for your life, you know, <laughs> yeah. and and it happened so many times, you mm. know. And it's like, um, and I mean, that's the first time where I actually saw something, you know, mm. the chain gang. Mm-mm. And then after that, uh, it just got worse and worse mm. and worse. You know, it's like it comes to a point where even our dog that seldom howls, Mm-mm. we had we had this huge black Labrador, mm. which everybody adored. They say, oh, this dog is good for keeping, you know, mm. all these kind of things away yeah. from you. The dog never howls, but all of a sudden the dog started to howl like crazy. Wow! And then next thing you know, it's like the later part of the night, you start seeing things in the house. Yeah, oh, it's creepy. Yeah. Do you think? Do, do you think your experience living in Punggol shaped you to be like um, a more receptive person 
uh, moving forward uh, in terms of approaching all these paranormal activities? Ah, uh, okay. What it has made me realize is there are spirits out there, mm. right? And uh, we can't avoid them. Yeah. Some of them want to talk to us or tell us something, or maybe mm. they they need us to pray for them or help them or help them, them in, in yeah. some way. Um, they are more afraid of us than we are afraid of them. Yeah. Because I have yet to have one that it comes up right to my face and go. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That never happens. You see them in the distance. Yeah. True. The closest I ever encountered was maybe about six foot away. Mm, uh, that, that's quite new. That was close enough, and uh, I remember I just fainted after that. No, but I think you had one that mm. was a lot closer. Um, and you told us, you told me the story before, and then we spoke about it just now, just before we came on air. Um, let's talk about the bus stop in in Pungo, right? The 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 one where you know you mentioned earlier. Right. Okay. Um, now I I had friends living in the in the estate there and um, there used to be this uh, two sisters one sister used to work in metro uh, the older sister mm. and the younger sister used to walk up to the main road every night and wait for the sister to come back and she would wait just at the side road just before the main road uh, for the sister to come back and the sister normally comes back on the last bus which will normally reach back at about maybe 11 o'clock mm. so this went on for many years And um, I always used to tell her, I said, hey, you know, you're a girl, you're sitting out here. She says, ah, yeah, this road, who comes here? You know, nobody. Well, she starts to challenge. Ah. Mm. So then life went on as per normal. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember I went, uh, that time I was doing my national service. So I went to Taiwan for about one and a half months. Yeah. Then when I came back that night, I uh, decided to go out. Mm. So I was driving a friend's car. And I drove back into you know, going back to the house. And as I turned into 17th Avenue and I mm. saw her sitting there, so I was like, I stopped the car because, you know, mm. she's a nice girl. I mean, yeah. we, we sort of known each other for many years mm. and I know the family so well. So I started chatting with her. I said, hey, it's almost, you know, 11 o'clock and your sister mm-hmm. is not back. She said, yeah, the bus will come. She'll be here. Mm. So we just sat there, chatted and, you know, pat me on the shoulder. You know, you bought anything from me, you know, when you went to Taiwan, I said, mm. God, tomorrow I'll bring for you. You know, that's, So happy to see each other. Yeah. Then the last bus came. The sister didn't come down. So I said, I looked at her. I said, Hey, I think your sister went out with a boyfriend. La. Must be gone mm-hmm. somewhere. Mm-hmm. I said, Come, I give you a lift home, lah. Mm-hmm. So I drove her back to the house. Yeah. Ch- chatting and you know she kept tapping my shoulder and then you know as she got out of the car, mm-hmm. gave me a kiss on the cheek. Mm-hmm. I said, Tomorrow you must come, ah. Yeah. I said, Yeah. There's some nice things that you like. I bought for you. Mm-hmm. So it was normal. Mm-hmm. Next morning, I woke up about 10, had my breakfast, brushed my teeth, everything. So I carried all the bags, mm. walked towards the house. And just as I reached the house, I, I walked in the gate and I could see the living room. And there was this huge picture of her with two candles burning. Oh, man. And I just looked at it and I knew something was wrong because... Uh, you start to feel the eerie. The it's like, officer. you know... People don't do that unless someone passed away. Yeah, true. Yeah. Then her mother came along and I asked her, I said, Auntie, what happened? Mm-hmm. Then she said, um, she was waiting one night for the sister. Mm-hmm. Uh, one car did a sharp turn, skidded and uh, killed oh, her on the spot. Man. And then my jaw just dropped. I froze. Um, I was sad. Yeah. I was confused because mm-hmm. she was with me. Yeah. She touched, so, she touched you. Yeah. Mm. So I told auntie, I said, auntie, I said, um, I don't know how to tell you this, but I saw her last night. Mm. We were sitting down talking outside and uh, she even gave me a kiss on my cheek and said, see you tomorrow. And the mother said to me, she treated you like a big brother. And she said, we believe that mm-hmm. sometimes they wait for their loved ones mm. before they actually go. I see. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at, at that point of time, I broke down and cried. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, and I believe that not all spirits are bad after that, you know. But yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't understand the touch, the feeling that mm-hmm. I had. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like the a, a normal person, mm-hmm. you know, that just gives you a kiss on the cheek. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was a very touching moment. Uh. That, was, that was a good spirit. Mm. Yeah, and, and it felt very real to you. Yeah, right? it was very, very real. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Um, and she looked right. At nothing at that point in time made you think that oh, you know, a- a- am I Suspecting. talking to to a human being? No, right. 
No, there was nothing cold. There was mm. nothing spooky or eerie. I mean, yeah. the touch was warm, natural. You know, nothing. I never suspected anything. Yeah. Um, I I have something. Something happened to me. This was like maybe. Uh, I I don't want to get the date wrong or mm. the year wrong, but many years ago, right? So there was this guy that lived in my my neighborhood, um, uh, in Upper Thompson. Mm-mm. And then, so I remember walking down the road. Uh, I was leaving. So this was in the afternoon. Was it at night? It was in the afternoon. I saw this guy, and um, he he looked at me, and I looked at him, and then he just walked on. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we weren't like buddy buddy, you know. Mm-hmm. But we would usually usually say hi or we would wave. But this time, nothing. Yeah. He looked at me, and then he just walked on. It's like okay. And then a few days later, I went down to Thompson CC. And then uh, I I met up with this friend called Jim. Mm. So I told him that you know I I saw this guy you know because that place that we went to at Thompson CC to eat belongs to his family. Uh-huh. So I said hey, you know I I saw this fellow that day but he looked like very un- unhappy and you know. Mm. And then he said oh when was this? I was like no this was last week. And then this guy Jim just kept quiet. He's like no cannot be bro because he passed away one month ago. Wow. Oh. Yeah. I said no I just saw him you know but not nothing. Wow. Yeah, it didn't look like a ghost. It looked like a just a real person. A real person, yeah. yeah. And I was like, my God, yeah, that's the first time you know I I I saw a ghost that looked like. 100% What was your like reaction us. when you know about that news? I felt very sad. Yeah, yeah. of course, you know, I felt very sad, yeah. and yeah. I was like, okay, why why did I see him then? You know, uh, what was it supposed to mean? But after that, no, mm. I never had had any experience with him again. Mm. Is that is it like all these uh, spirits? They are trying to say their last goodbye before they meet. P- probably, probably. I'm I'm just p- p- probably opening up a discussion here. Mm. Maybe they are trying to say their last goodbye before they enter the underworld. Yeah. What's I mean, your take on that? Um, maybe like I don't know. Maybe thirty mm. days later, they they go back home for the last time. I I don't know, man. Mm. Like everyone, every religion has got their own beliefs. beliefs yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your your belief on that? Okay, um, I think they roam the earth for about forty days. If, mm. if 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 I'm not wrong, I mean this yeah. is what I grew up hearing. Yeah, um, if they say their last goodbyes and all that, they go earlier. But you know, if they have unfinished business, they mm-hmm. will still be around. Mm. Some of them do not want to go back into the underworld. Mm-hmm. Some of them will still hang around, and once the gate closes, they're stuck here. Mm-hmm. You know, there's like a certain time frame. I mean, this is all. The stories I heard growing up and yeah. all that, you mm-hmm. know. So there's a lot of um, spirits, aimless spirits roaming around, mm-hmm. um, trying to find a way out, trying to find the exit. Yeah, but they're stuck, you know, because they missed the so-called time frame mm-hmm. for them to go back. Wow. Yeah, I I feel that sometimes it's unfinished business. So, or there's too much sadness, so the family can't let go. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and you know, it always happens when it's a sudden death. If it's Uh, people that are old, and then you know, you go like, okay, you know, I think it was time for you to go. But then when when it's just sudden, and then yeah, people just can't let go. So that it's True. that emotional attachment. Mm. Yeah, that, that's my take. But surprisingly, I mean, okay, we we talk about this, um, um, you know, unfinished business and all that. But there was an encounter once. Um, my grandma was very very close to me. Uh, she passed away a long mm-hmm. time ago, mm-hmm. and uh, I used to, you know, spend a lot of time with her. So one day, after she passed away for about quite a number of years, I was feeling very down, very depressed. Mm-hmm. So I went to Pasir Ris Park, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I sat there very quietly. And this was about midnight, ah, uh, mind you. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, this old Malay lady comes to me, and she speaks to me in Malay, right? Mm-hmm. And she said to me, and the first thing she said to me was mm-hmm. a name. Which only one person called me, but it never hit me at that point. Wow! Mm. She said, "Boy, jangan ingat banyak banyak lah. Mm. Ada apa hal?" And, mm. and that means, in in translation, uh, don't 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 overthink, mm-hmm. right? Uh, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then she went on to talk, you know, and then uh, at that point of time, I was having problems with a few friends, Mm-mm. people that I trusted. Mm, and, right. Um, they backstabbed me, and uh, it, it it did a lot of damage. Oh, I see. So she said, you know, she said, don't think too much. Mm. And then in, I'll speak in Malay lah, yeah? yeah. So so everybody can, un- I, I'll speak in English so everybody can understand. Mm. So translated, she said, the ones who you think are your friends are your enemies. The ones that you think are your enemies are your friends. Wow. You know, 
Then after that, in about wow. five ten minutes, she said, "Okay, Nini, uh, sudah balik lah, sudah lambat." Mm. So she, I said, "Okay, jaga, but bye bye, jalan mm. lah." Yeah. And it's quite a walk back to the main road. Mm-hmm. So it's about ten minutes. Mm. So after after she left, I was I, about two minutes later. I said, "Hey, I better follow her. Like, no old lady walking back." Yeah. I turned around, just, and I can tell there. you, there's no way she can disappear. That fast. She, she just vanish. Oh man. Hmm. You know and. Mm-mm. I wasn't spooked, yeah. But I was confused why she called me boy, and I yeah. wasn't a boy, you know, at that time. I was in my thirties, you know, <laughs> <laughs> grown man. Yeah. yeah. But surprisingly, the very next day, mm. whatever she said came true. Mm. Right. Those that I hated were my friends. Those who were my friends were the ones who did that. Oh man. Yeah. Huh. Man. It's like as if like she's there to warn you. No, the strangest thing mm. is only my grandmother calls me boy. You see. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's the strangest thing. Okay. So you know, did she take another form? I don't know. Yeah. yeah and and until today, I still question myself. Though. Mm. Yeah. It 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 seems like you I mean that experience have a very personal touch in you, right? Yeah. Especially I mean. You see, when... because my 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 grandmother was mm. uh she was from Labuan. Mm. She wears, you know, the sarongabaya and all mm. this style of thing. So mm-hmm. very, very Malay. Mm. Yeah. So I didn't look one bit like her, lah. <laughs> That's what mm. I can say. Wow. Oh. 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 But Amazing. could your could your grandmother see things? My grandmother could see things. My ah. grandmother sometimes used to sit in the house. You know, she, all of a sudden she'll just turn and look at something. You go away. Don't come here. Go wow, away. That's she, real, man. Yeah, she used yeah. to do oh. things like that. You know. So I, I think you got your gift from her. Mm. You, you think so? Maybe. Is mm. is maybe is inherited, uh? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And she used to tell me when growing up, say, "You don't be afraid. You see anything, you just ask to go away, and you just pray. Tell it to go away." Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That wow. makes a lot of sense. Mm. Um, mm. And then years later, uh, you enlisted in the army, and then you were sent to Nisun camp. Ah, uh. which year was this? <laughs> I went into Nisun in 1970. Hang on, 1975. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, I was the. Um, I signed up as a regular, so mm. the regulars were always uh, considered what you call the direct intake. I see. So what it meant was, the direct intake will go in one week before the entire enlistment comes in. Mm-hmm. So there were 15 of us. They put us in Charlie Company, mm-hmm. and Charlie Company is smack in the middle of the. Parade ground. I see. Mm. So we were happy because the corporals, the officers were all very nice to us. You know, mm. it's like we didn't. Oh, oh, recruit training is so nice. Yeah, fine. Do whatever you want. You know, go jalan here, jalan there. But boy, uh, the first night changed our, just changed our attitude. Wow. I mean, my first encounter was the guys were all out there on the parade ground uh, playing football. On the concrete. Okay. Yeah. So I was hot. I went up to shower. Mm-hmm. I was showering in the next cubicle. The guy started singing. So I thought one of my Bang my mitzah. buddies, right? Mm. And you know, in the, in those days, in the in my time, ah, uh, mm. the shower cubicles didn't have doors. You know. Oh, really? So it's yeah. just one partition, and then you can just poke your head and look at the next guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I went and say, "Shut up, lah! I want to sing properly. Sing lah!" Then I stuck my head there, and there was nobody. Oh. So I thought, okay, maybe the next one. So I just went to the next one, and the guy couldn't have run out. Yeah, yeah, true. You know. Hmm. So the next thing I did was I ran out with soap all over my body, with a <laughs> towel run down, and I went down to the parade square. All the fourteen guys were there. So that means no one, no, no one, one, no one. Hmm. Yeah, and if anybody had run out, you know, you would see uh, wet footsteps. There right. was yeah. nothing. True. So that was that was the first encounter. Mm. Then the same night itself, um, we all after that, and I told them the story. Mm. We all said, "Okay, we all share one one room." So all fifteen of us went into this one of the rooms, mm. and then middle of the night, one of the beds started to shake. An empty bed? Yeah, it's a double deck. Eh? Mm. Wow, that's heavy. Yeah. We all mm. like to sleep at the top because yeah. the fan is down there. Yeah. yeah, right. The whole bed started to shake, and there was nobody there. And this guy was screaming, you know. Wow. He was just screaming his head. So, we all got scared. We went yeah. downstairs uh, to the platoon office, and that 
you just sit there outside and you just it's all bright because the whole area is lit up mm. and part of the parade ground is lit up so we're sitting there you know just drinking coffee after coffee didn't dare to sleep and all of a sudden you see a platoon marching across the far end of the parade square wow yeah in one night three encounters eh? encounters and this is the the first night the very first night oh wow, wow. Yeah. What, what a welcome to the camp we have a photo <laughs> of uh, the, the camp yeah mm. so so this is the present day one mm. uh on facebook itself i shared yeah this one this mm. is the old yeah like, yeah, yeah built back like in the that, 70s yeah, yeah. does this does this bring all the nostalgic moments oh boy <laughs> tell me about it <laughs> Yeah, the, I think oh, the camp was built by the British. Oh, yeah. it was, it was. Yeah, there are parts of the camp that's underground as well. That's right. Yeah, mm. but that's restricted area. Yeah, I I spent about uh I spent my reservist there, Mm-mm. so um, but you know I never had a paranormal encounter there. Mm. Uh, I think it's also because every day of my reservist I was always drunk. <laughs> <laughs> What a way to to go for your reservist, man. Of course, man. You know, you, <laughs> you you don't go there like willingly. You are forced to go. So I make the most of uh the camp because the alcohol is very cheap, right? The beer. Yeah. No, I just drink. Mm. Yeah. So I'm always drunk. But then I had a lot of um uh reservist mates that would tell me of their experiences. Mm. Yeah. So uh I I think the camp is is very haunted. The um army defense force uses the camp now. I see. Yeah. ADF. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of stories there. It's like, uh, you see, in those days, we didn't have pages, we didn't have mobile phones. Yeah. We had mm. to queue up to use the, you know, the very old coiner phone, you know. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, we all down there, all missing our girlfriends, especially the first group of us. Mm. The first few days, we didn't dare call our girlfriends because we didn't dare go down alone and use the phone. Yeah. After true. what we saw, mm. after a few days, got a bit braver. So go down, put mm. your ten cents, twenty cents. You start talking on the phone. Pop! Someone slaps you at the back of the head. You turn around, nobody. Wow, split second. So all forgot about girlfriends after that. <laughs> you know, nobody dares to go down and make a phone call. Wow. But the strangest thing is, once all the recruits started coming in, yeah. when there were more people, the nonsense stopped. Wow. So it only happens mm. on those who have to do extra duty on the weekends when all the everybody yeah, else books out. So you only got maybe in one company four or five people. Had to stay back. It'll up. start mm. again. Uh. Yeah. Wow. Uh. But the bathrooms and all that, um, I heard a lot of stories from my other platoon mm. mates. Even when the whole battalion was in, mm. uh, especially the last guy who goes and shower, mm. you know, all of a sudden the soap will just bloop, just fall off the, you know, the the the, the hole the in the wall. Mm. It will just fall off, mm. and then your towel will just drop on the floor. Mm. You know, just oh, pure creepy, disturbance. Uh. Wow. Yeah. So it came to a point where no more showers after ten o'clock. Mm. Uh, the instructions was. Or have to shower by ten o'clock unless you go for your field march or mm. camp. Then you are given longer. But ten o'clock all in bed. Oh, okay. There were too many complaints. Uh. Do you find you do, do you finally con- uh, manage to conclude uh, what is the entity? I mean, maybe you you might see a figure before you might uh, sense a fi- uh, sense something. But do you manage to conclude? Is it a female entity or male entity? We couldn't tell. Mm. But. Um, You see, when we started to see all these things, uh, yeah. we had a platoon sergeant who, who had been there for many, many years. Mm. Now, in the 70s, there were a lot of soldiers who committed suicide in the barracks. Oh, mm. I see. Which was never disclosed. Mm. Mm, right? Some of them used to hang themselves. Uh, you know, and, and they did all kinds of funny, funny things. Lah. So, Mm-mm. they could be unhappy or mischievous spirits. Just yeah. having fun. It's like, hey, hey, now my turn to torture you. <laughs> Stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So, you you never know. Yeah. Um, do you know why did they mention why these uh, men committed suicide? Were they unhappy, or could have been the work of bad entities? Maybe. Okay, in the seventies, uh, I think mm. those who went and did uh, recruit training in the seventies, they will know what I'm talking about. It was tough. Mm. They they really put you through hell. Mm. Yeah. Right. It's not like now. Now the NS boys are like Boy Scouts. Mm, you know, we used we mm. used to duck walk around the parade parade square, yeah, wow. five rounds. You know, at ten o'clock at night, they used to wake you up one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. Full battle order, change, go down. Number three, come back, change, up down, up down. Wow. Then you expected to wake up at five o'clock. A lot of these um, 
mummy's boys couldn't take it. Yeah, true. They couldn't take the mental torture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and you couldn't go back for the first one month. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them homesick, you mm-hmm. know, can't take it. Then that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Man, I, I, I think during your time in the 70s, I think uh, this kind of uh, experience is real. Man, uh, those were those were the time of the prime age or the uh, the pioneers, where they went through a lot of uh, quality quality training back in the army. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those days it was tough. Mm. It was tough. I yeah. mean, that is when the boys became men. True. Now mm. the boys become older boys. <laughs> 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 wow! Wow! Yeah, yeah, but you know, I always used to hear stories. You mm. know. Um, Like you know, the the older folks then would tell me, oh, you yeah. know, like whatever you're experiencing now, uh, it's nothing compared, compared, you know. And then I hear stories from incheks and all, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I do work with uh, with the SCF now, yeah. right? And then so I'm on site for exercises, and I see the welfare that the soldiers get now is so much better. Yeah, I yeah. mean, just in terms of like their their boots. Right, it's so much more comfortable, <laughs> and then the the gear and all, and then you see like they have a lot of breaks, the water parade. Yeah, if it gets too hot, right, and it's cold black, so mm. everybody has to stop mm. whatever they're doing. Right, back yeah. when I w- was in the army, they didn't have anything like that. True. Yeah, mm. and then if you if you feel like you're gonna faint, and then you become like the the enemy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you faint, the office the officer will say you faint, I put you on charge. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's how bad it was. Wow. Yeah. So no one there, no one there, and everyone endure through. Yes, yeah. Die, die. You just endure the mm. exercise. Wow. Yeah. Those do and don't complain. That was the policy before. Yeah. Mm. Now different. Little bit of rain, cat one, cat two, lightning, thunder, all going take cover. Yeah. Mm. True. Last time raining, you take cover, extra duty. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Lightning, everything. You're just out there. Mm. Yeah. I'm just. Uh, I have a very quick question. Do you think that like, back then during your training days? Uh, the fatigue, the, the 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 tiredness that you all experience, might also have an effect for you all to see a similar entity like. You know, sometimes when, when when people are tired, fatigue, this kind of uh, body condition might also contribute into seeing uh, paranormal entities. I yeah. think that's a good question. To yeah. Be, to be very frank and very mm. blunt, mm. you are too fatigued and too tired to see anything. You just KO. Mm. You are out cold. The minute some of us don't even take our shower, I we see. just go yeah. back to we just go back to the bunk. We don't even want to sleep on the bed mm. because we are so dirty. We just lie on the floor and we just fall asleep. Everybody is so tired. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So the chances of you seeing anything are very slim because even in the morning when they try to wake you up, we can't wake up because we are so tired, exhausted by exhausted, the training. Totally man. exhausted. Uh, we have a comment here. Uh, yeah, sorry. That 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 fits into what we're talking about now. Um, how do I pronounce your name? Ash. Yeah. Okay, we have a lot of comments. Um, <laughs> <to> like... <laughs> the the question is, where would you say is the hot spots in the army camps, like the most high activity areas? Where do you think it will be? A lot of them were centered around the toilets yeah. and and mm. the bunks. Mm. Yeah, parade square not so much, but it's always. Always, you get disturbances, uh, and the strange thing is, it always goes for the weakest person. Oh, yeah. Mm. Those weakest like in, in terms of what? weakest in terms of mentality, uh, or mentality. Physical? Those very quiet ones and all that. But you get ah. those, you know, those like paikia, paikia, very tough guys. Mm-mm. Don't really get disturbed. Yeah. The quiet ones get disturbed. Well, that's mm. unfair, man. Yeah. No, but then they're the easiest to to disturb mm. because they get the best reaction. I think mm. if mm. you're talking about. A mischievous entity, yeah. Or you, if um, those you know we've spoken about this before, like negative folks, um, they are more prone to being disturbed because they want to zap your 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 energy, yeah. Mm. Or sometimes they want to use your your body as their tool, right? Yeah. So the easiest people for them to attack would be the negative one. It's very difficult to 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 attack a person that's positive. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. That's why I think. Mm. Correct. Wow. Wow. Um, th- there were also stories about people seeing the Pontianak at Nisun Camp. Do you think that she exists? She does. Hmm. She does. I I had a very quick glimpse of it uh, mm. in Pongo. Uh, at okay. first, I used to hear the very shrill laughter, and I thought maybe one of my neighbors, you know, after having a few drinks, would actually <laughs> laugh like that. Mm. But um, 
it used to happen like about two, three times a month. And then we had mm. this uh, old Malay lady that used to come and clean our mm. house. Mm-mm. And um, she asked me, Mm-mm. have you seen or heard anything? I said, yeah. Mm. And she said, uh, tempat sini banyak kotor. That means this place is very, very dirty. Very dirty. Mm. Yeah, then I told her about what I saw, the chain gang. And I also told her about uh, three encounters in the house. Yeah. Uh, one was, uh, there was this tall figure as, as high as the ceiling Mm-mm. that was leaning over my cousin. Okay. And this was about after midnight because my cousin mm. started to cry and my room was just next to him so I just went mm-hmm. up. And then when I looked, I saw this huge figure just oh. like leaning over but not trying to touch him but just leaning over and looking at him. Wow. Yeah. And um, of course, I'll do like what my grandma tells me. Lah. Don't get be out. afraid. Get yeah. out. You know, just get out of here and then you just, we pray in our own way. We pray. Mm. Then after that, it happened to my auntie's room. Mm-hmm. Um, She called me. I went there. There was a lady sitting in front of a dressing table combing oh, her hair. Oh my God. Uh, but no face. Huh? Is, is she facing the the opposite direction? She or? was facing the mirror okay. and her back was facing my auntie. So, so that means you can see the reflection of the mirror? Lah. No, no. I could see the person sitting there but there was no reflection on the mirror. Oh my God. Yeah. Hmm. And then on the fourth day, it hit, it went after me. Because hmm. I used to wake up very early to go to camp, you see. So yeah. I used to wake up at 5.30. Mm-mm. And our house is such that the kitchen, Mm-mm. after the kitchen is the garden. It's, it was a huge garden because we got rambutan trees and all that. So I woke up, I went to the kitchen, went to the fridge. And the fridge is just next to the so-called sliding glass uh, window. Mm-mm. So I took my glass of milk and I was drinking and I was looking and I was like, is somebody at the Mm-mm. rambutan tree, you know? Mm-mm. Like the guy was kneeling down or praying. So I kept looking and then I switched on the... Um, Spotlight mm. to get a better look. The minute I switched on the spotlight, this thing just woke up and whew, just came straight to me, you know, right in front of the, the wow. glass. And that was the that was the one I was telling you. I just fainted, wow. and I was sick for a few days after that. I mean, mm. you you sense that the the energy, uh, yeah. I mean, it was really bad. That yeah. one was really bad. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the aftermath. I mean, how, how how do you feel? Um, what kind of like uh, sick, sickness that you feel that, that you felt? I had that? a high fever. Okay. Uh, I was shaking a lot, uh, a lot of vomiting. Yeah, yeah, wow. things like that. It, it was really bad. And Is then, it a hot uh, fever or cold fever? <coughs> hot fever. Hot fever. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes so until we yeah. had the priest to come down and um, what the priest did was he buried a cross in mm. four corners of the garden. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Then he said his prayers and all that. And mm. uh, surprisingly, even the priest said to us, "She said, 'Yeah, um, it's quite a few complaints in this area. Okay, Pongo is quite bad.' So after mm. the priest buried the, the the crosses and did the prayer, did it help? It it calmed down. Ah, nice. Calmed okay, down. so wow. at least that worked. Yeah, mm. amazing man. Yeah, amazing. I mean, you you have a a, a a lifelong experience of all this. Yeah, you wow, should write amazing, a book. Amazing man. You really should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> and and I I I I, I always believe that." All this thing happen in in a, in a person's life happens for a reason, like mm. going back, man, going back to your history, Chris. When your when your grandmother said that, uh, do not be afraid, you know, you can confront them. You know, mm. I think that that shape you and give you that kind of uh, ability to to actually uh, approach future entities that you yeah. will see. Actually, my grandma used to also tell us one mm. thing, which uh, I didn't want to say it online, but. Mm. Um, She said to use all the vulgar language that you can <laughs> because these entities don't like it. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. But I think a oh. demonic entity would though. Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, because I, I mean, vulgarity is, is, is negative. But, yeah. So then they feed off that, that anger or yeah. that, that fear. Mm. Uh, I, I saw in a comment earlier, I can't remember the person's name, yeah. but this person asked whether have we heard of the Nasi Lemak lady in Pulau Tekong? So I'm thinking it's It's a ghost, mm. right? I I think somebody once told me about this, uh, female, uh, entity, right? So mm. she's elderly that will go around selling nasi lemak, but she's a ghost. Wow. That, yeah, I don't know. I have you heard anything about this, no. Chris? Is a no? myth? Is a myth? Uh? I don't know. The only nasi lemak lady I know in the camp was my old camp in Jurong. <laughs> Jurong camp too. The nasi lemak was then power. Wow. So it's a real person though. Mm. <laughs> It's not a ghost. <laughs> I wasn't leading up to a ghost story. <laughs> wow, we have a lot of people commenting uh, yeah. on our live show. 
Okay, uh, let me uh, show your comments, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I will try to go on the chronicle uh, order lah. Uh, okay, Muhammad Hafiz bin Ismail said that here. Uh, no makeup, no face. What was he trying to say? I have no idea. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next comment. Okay, uh, Kelvin Ong. Anyone? Okay, uh, anyone knows? Okay, let me send some. Uh, anyone knows about the firing range haunting at Selarang Camp? Selarang? No, I I never been hmm. to Selarang. Yeah, never been to Selarang. Hmm. Wow. Uh, someone just bought us five coffees. Oh, yeah, thank awesome. you. Brings us a total of twelve coffees today. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. We have one one comment here, but uh, Ahish Pandey. For light sleepers, will it be harder for them to get through the night? Will the spirit disturb them more? Hmm. Hmm. What do you think on that, Chris? I. Hmm. It's very hard to say. Um, hmm. If there is one present hmm. near you, and if they decide to disturb you, then hmm. of course, I mean, spirits. You know, they will. They are moving about all over the place. True. Right. True. And hmm. um, normally, what. All the old folks tell us, us um, you know, they always say to us that spirits will come to you when mm. you are at the lowest point, when you are at the weakest. I see. When your spirits are very low, Mm-mm. yeah, that's when they attack you. Yeah. But if you have high spirits, you know, you're strong. They will stay as far away as from you as possible. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So if you're a light sleeper and you know you're a very strong person with very high spirits and all mm. that, it won't affect you, lah. You're safe. Mm. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, If you don't mind, you know, I like yeah. to to share this. When I I think when I started my whole paranormal journey, mm-hmm. I was going through a very bad patch. You know, mm-hmm. I I think you you know about it. Yeah. And then I was suffering from depression. So when when I started off as a paranormal investigator, then mm-hmm. I used to get really good results. Mm-hmm. And then you know, I think my life has been a roller coaster. Then it's always ups and downs, and then the downs I be so upset. Mm. And then I could always like get the entities to communicate. You. And then yeah. I stopped, right? And then yeah. I started doing my life coaching. I started doing my my um, morning mm. meditations and all that. And mm. I become very positive. Mm. And then I remember doing stuff for like Asia One. Mm. I brought them to Bukit Batok Nature Reserve. Always had good uh, results there. Yeah. And then when I went there, there was nothing. Mm. Yeah. And then the producers were looking at me like, "No, okay, can we get some action?" So I won action, but there's none. <laughs> Mm. And then I brought like mothership to um uh this this other park and mm. we did stuff for Halloween. Labrador? Uh no no mm. no, Kenridge Park. Okay. Uh, and yeah, and then there wasn't much activity as well. And then uh, a good friend told me, you know, the reason why Mm-mm. you don't get the results now is because you're positive. They 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 I don't see. have anything to do with yes. you. I see. I said, yeah. wow. Okay, that that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah. So it's exactly what Chris said. You know, I it's Mm-mm. your your spirits. If you're, I think, very low. Then they know that they can they can just like they, they, the the yeah. old folks used to say mm. when your when your star is shining yeah they all believe that there's everyone is a star when mm. your star is shining bright mm. nothing touches you when mm. your star is it lowest. is dimmest mm. that's when all these things come to you I see yeah. oh wow Wait. so you got to stay positive you know don't don't get depressed don't get down because Mm-mm. you're opening the the door mm. to a lot of uninvited guests huh? mm. yeah yeah. Wow. wow, I mean, it's just like if you're walking there and all of a sudden you send something, you know, it's mm. like, yeah, okay, don't disturb me, mm. keep your yeah. spirits up, and then you just True. go. True. But if you're gonna freak out, uh, the more it's gonna go after you. Yeah, mm. yeah. True. I mean, I'm no hero lah, but I'm still scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but you got a good energy. Yeah. Sure. So that's why I always mm. look forward to to seeing you. you know, when, mm. whenever we, we have met and then we have like beer or two, mm. right? Your your energy is good. Like you're you're very positive, you're 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 very firm. So I I I I think that's why they don't mess around with, with you. No yeah. they see my surname more jabot. Hey, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what a punchline, huh? That's yeah. right. <laughs> for, for those of you who just tuning in, yeah, his name is Christopher Hedick. <laughs> yeah, just so you know. <laughs> Nice, nice. Okay, I, I think we have a lot uh, more comments from our uh, live viewers here. 
Uh, and not visitors? Uh, not visitors. Visitors will be in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Spiritual visitors. Okay, uh, we have a live comment here uh, by Hisham Kamaris. Or Kanaris. Okay, I hope mm-hmm. I pronounce it right. I don't understand why is everyone afraid of seeing ladies combing their hair in the middle of the night. So I had this encounter where, or oh, this is a very long Uh, where I was 3 a.m. in in camp, I couldn't sleep. My bunk mates were sleeping. I decided to comb my hair directly in front of my bunk mate. He was sleeping. I then giggled a bit. He woke up. He screamed at me. Up till now, I still I still don't understand why he screamed at me. Was it wrong to comb your hair in front of someone? So that was his question. Um. No, I, I think it's just that 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 thought, like you know, if you wake up and you see somebody combing your hair, and then you know, mm. you, you take a while to wake up, right? Yeah. And to focus, and then yeah, that would freak people out mm. because the Pontiana is known to to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she would mm. comb her hair, so I guess that's that's why. Mm. I want to ask uh, 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 Chris on on uh, on a question here. Mm. Uh, what's your take when you see bit and pieces of strands of hair on the floor? And you know that place is. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I mean he will know that it's not his. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, if he's in a camp yeah. or uh, in, in, at, at a person's house, you yeah. know, when you know this place has always been kept clean, but you you still see this kind of strands of hair. Mm. What's your take on that? What does um, it resemble? I mean, I grew up seeing hair on the floor every day. Mm. You know, I mean, I was surrounded by aunties. And they all had long uh, hair. I see. So I I can't really answer that question. Mm-hmm. But to me, experiencing, you know, Pontiana, you know, mm-hmm. like, um, mm-hmm. the myth is you smell flowers. Yeah, oh. you get the sweet smell, and I can tell you, it is so true. Wow! All of a sudden, you know, a still night, and then you get a whiff of this, and don't wow. ever, don't you ever dare say, "Wow, it's a nice smell." It will yeah. follow you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. I mean, you talk about Pontianas; they are there. Yeah. But I think now with urbanization, um, people think they don't exist. Hmm. Yeah, very skeptical right now. My yeah. my second son and myself saw mm. it when we were renting an apartment in mm. Sengkang. It was in our kitchen. Wow. Yep. Wow. He saw it. He kept quiet. He didn't tell me anything. The next day, I woke up to have a, a glass of milk. Mm. I have this habit of getting up to drink milk. Mm. Maybe in my previous life, I was a cow. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> And I saw it. You know, just standing at the window. So wow. the next wow. morning, my son looked at me. Mm. Russell, he said, oh, "Are you okay?" He, then he said, "You saw it, is it?" I said, "Yeah, I saw it." Mm-mm-mm. So and I, and I said, "Yeah, but I always thought, you know, HDB no more already." Wow. So he said, mm. "Yeah, they are braided." Yeah, then you talk about the flying egg. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. What's it called in Malay? In Malay, it's called tuju tuju. Tuju tuju. It's like a black magic uh, kind of uh, egg where people send to a, a person uh, with bad intentions. Uh. Yeah, yeah, to harm that person mm. who receive it. Because mm. when you see it at night, it's like a flame flying through the sky. Wow. Yeah, you know, it's like mm. a small flame just flying. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to see a lot of that in Pongo. Because what what we knew was in mm. Pongo in in Pongo land there was one bomo Mm-mm. at Sungai Tengah which is at the other part of Pongo I was see. another village another bomo mm. and these two couldn't see eye to eye and you could see these eggs just flying and all of a sudden pew drops inside the sea mm. you know it's like as if a force stopped it yeah it doesn't reach its destination yeah, mm. yeah. and so, it's always at night always at night the myth here the this this kind of egg or tuju tuju can only operate at night okay yeah and I actually saw one that actually fell on the beach. Oh. And um, I keep I went to see. I thought, you know, yeah. what is this? You know. Yeah. So it had broken on the on on the beach, mm-hmm. and there was a pin and a red cloth. Oh my yeah. god! In it. Hmm. Hmm. That's all I saw. And then, mm-hmm. uh, thank God, I didn't touch it. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because who knows what would have happened? Huh? Yeah, yeah it would have gone straight to me, though. Yeah. Yeah. And this kind of thing is really uh, it. It has the potential to uh, to kill. Mm. Mm. Uh, I heard I heard stories lah from yeah. our elderly. Mm-hmm. They said that this tuju tuju or this uh, flying egg, 
once reached its destination or and, and uh, reached its person of intent, right? It, it has the potential to kill. Wow. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Because that, that that is the intention of the pers- of the sender. You see, the yeah, sender to, have to, have to a lot of harm, right? Yeah, have a lot of ill feeling, right? So that's where he want to do harm to us. Yeah. Mm. Some of them either it kills you or it just turns people crazy. And, yeah. True. You know, some of them become chat chat and you know. Yes. Things like that. Mm. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> um, Chris, do, would you have like an experience that's like the most chilling, like the scariest of them all, like of everything that you're experienced? What would be it? I think the one that really scared me was when that you know I told you earlier, the one that just came Mm-mm. straight into my face. Uh, I've never had it so close before. Mm. Yeah, to me that was the scariest because most of the time I always see it at a distance. Yeah. But mm. this one came so close to me, uh, I could see right through it. I could see my rambutan tree. Wow! Mm. There was no face. Mm. It was just like you know a blanket cast over a figure. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I've always thought that I would see something out of a Dracula movie or something out of a horror movie, but um, mm. I haven't. Yeah, mm. because it's not like that, you know. Yeah, it's not like that. Yeah, a lot of people think that ghosts are like whatever they see. Uh, in Hollywood, Hollywood. Yeah. but it's really 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 not like that true mm, true wow um, do you want to, to take some questions that Ken. are on Facebook yeah uh, before we do that guys once again if you're just tuning in mm. uh, we have got this thing called buy me a coffee uh, so it's a virtual coffee the link is just above Indra mm. uh, it's buymeacoffee.com slash GFS TV yeah right uh, so today 12 awesome people No, people have bought us coffees today and we got 12 of them for for today. Yes, mm. for tonight. Yeah. Yeah, so if you could, if you want, you can add to the number and then we will thank you on air while we're still on air. But we're going to take <laughs> questions now. Okay, because the question, they, they, they are commenting really fast. So I'm trying to catch the, the question. <laughs> no worries, take your time, man. Yeah. I, I'm trying to go through as well. Yeah. Wow, a, a lot of people uh, come in uh, live on the platform and they comment. Okay, uh, I think we have uh, we missed out a few previous uh, question. Sure. Okay, uh, Noel. Yes. Okay, this one from Ahish Pandi. Uh, no, uh, Noel. Yes. <laughs> Will you still have the haunted hour podcast or is it over? Why? Why? Why is huh? Ahish trying to say here? No, it's still on. It's on now. It's still on now. Yeah. And we're going to go live every Friday. Yeah, if you if you can't make it, you know, to watch us live, we have you can watch it anytime on Facebook, mm. on YouTube, and then we are also on Google Music, yeah. Apple Music, and Spotify. Mm. Yeah. So we have a question here. I think this is a viewer uh, question to Chris. Is Nisun Camp the oldest camp in Singapore? Could be one of the oldest. Mm. Um, could be Sembawang Camp. Could be, I mean, Safti. Safti, there were two camps. The old camp and the new camp. Oh, the Safti Amai. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Even Safti was a very old camp. I, mm. I was there for a while. Uh, not very pleasant experience, but um, Air Raja was also a very, very old camp. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then there's Sarita Camp as well. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Air Raja, British. I think, was very old because uh, I remember I was there for a year. Uh, the barracks was so old. Wow. Um, and I knew that the British forces... Actually, use the camp there as their transport base. Because mm. I was a mechanic there, and uh, I did my training, and uh, it's mm. all the old hangars, which Salita Camp also has. I see. Uh, combat engineers also had their base there, mm. and and it's just super, super, super old. Mm. Yeah. So I can't really tell you which is the oldest. Mm. Camp yeah. Though. We have another question for Chris here. Chris, uh, was that probably like the Japanese occupation ghost type? I think referring to your uh, uh, encounter in Nisun Camp, right? Like maybe because the Japanese came by the beaches and sea. Okay. Um, if you want to talk about the encounter which I had about the chain gang. Mm. Now, Pongo, Pongo was well known much later. Mm-hmm. Um, when they were trying to reclaim the land, they found a lot of bones, a lot of skeletons. Wow, that's scary. Um, man. Then later on, Uh, after speaking to all the historians and all, they found out that the Japanese would line up the prisoners Mm-mm. at the beach, Mm-mm. make them dig, dig their own uh, trenches. Mm-mm. They would shoot them, and then they would just cover it up with sand and just left it be. 
Mm. Mm. So that's why they found a lot of bones. That in fact, the whole of Pongo, the, the beaches there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that sort of made me realize why these things were there. You see. Mm. Wow. Okay, we have a quick question from uh, Farhan to Noel. When is the next outing for paranormal activity? There are none. <laughs> <laughs> He paused for a while, you know, yeah. to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Because my wife is watching. With my mother-in-law, mm. with my daughter, so I've got to be very careful with my answers. <laughs> no, that don't have lah. But, mm. but uh, it, it, you, you, you are just tempted, right? You are just tempted. Of course, lah. Right? La, I'll always be tempted, <laughs> but it's better not to. Yeah, because it's not safe, and then you just don't want. I don't want to bring anything home. Mm-hmm. But I, I have been on like um, go sun recently. Not really recent, lah. I think it was October, November. Mm. Yeah, and that comes that. App itself, right? The episode comes out in March, which mm. is like two months. No, the month after next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. But then, but then now COVID, you wear mask. The hantu see you also scared. Exactly right. Ah, uh, yeah. All safe distancing. Mm. Yeah, I think they'll be laughing. At <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a question here from Kelvin Ong. Uh, I think uh, he's asking. I always see in shows that people who are near to death. Will see more spirits, or perhaps permanently in their life. Any anybody you guys you know of? Do I know of? Yeah, this Kevin Ong is trying to ask a question here. Uh-huh. Say that uh, I always see in shows. I think referring to movie show maybe uh-huh. that people who are near death will always have the tendency to see spirits. Yeah, they, they, I, I think they see like the the loved yeah. ones that have passed on. Yeah, mm. yeah. they do. I mean, uh, I, I've encountered. Uh, I'm not going to mention who because it's quite yeah. sad. Um, in the dying days, mm. they they tend to look at the corner of the room, and they tend to be ch- chatting with somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes they're mumbling. Okay. You know, and then they'll mm. turn around and they'll see somebody else. Yeah, um, it's very common. True. It's like you know your loved ones are saying, "Yeah, okay, I'm waiting for you. Yeah, it's mm. you know you're going to be coming to me soon." And sometimes you do see them smiling. Mm. It's like yeah. they are waiting to go. Um, It is a touching moment to see them like this. It, wow. it does happen. I I've seen it two or three times already. Mm. Yeah. So it it is it is is something that I can say is true mm. because I've seen it happen before. Yeah. Probably yeah. also it, for, for those who witness that, right? I think it give a, also a good reminder that hey, it's like a sign that this person would probably pass on to the next life. So yeah. may, maybe maybe you know. Maybe that that will be a good sign for you to actually uh, get yourself closer, spend more time with that person. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah I, yeah. I think if you have like older folks at home and they tell you that you know they've seen mm-hmm. uh, relatives that passed on, right? Then you should take that as a sign, right? Yeah. Like you said, and just spend as much quality time because you you never know when that's going to happen, right? Yeah. But sure. I, I think at the Like no matter whether that happens or not, we just need to stop taking things for granted. Yeah, yeah. Before we we lose the people we love. That's mm. why it always um, they always say say to your family to your loved ones I love you every day mm. Mm. because you don't know when that person will be taken away. True. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, said, well said. Well said. Well said. Okay. Uh, can we have one more question? Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, someone asked here. Yeah, uh, my mom said that Pontiana are scared of anything sharp. My mom say that when she's young, her mom will put rusty nails, which are more effective. Is it true, or anything sharp only that it, that, that that can take effect? Mm, yeah, I heard of this before. So mm. I think when we started, right when I started uh, my paranormal series, this mm-hmm. was like how many what thirteen years ago. Uh, I had a toolbox, right, that yeah. had like all the spare bats and and the, the spare batteries and mm. screwdriver and stuff, right. For uh to open our, up our paranormal gadgets, I would have like long nails just in case one day this Pontianak were to appear oh, wow. and it'd be very aggressive, right? Then we we can take out the nail. But I don't know. I don't know whether there's there's any truth to that. Uh, it's a myth or maybe legend has said has, has this saying that you know if for for you to actually uh stop the Pontianak, right? I think you need to take out the rusty. That one from movie lah. Movie yeah, okay yeah. lah. <laughs> yeah, because if it's a ghost, right? If you think about it, I think about it now. If it's a ghost and then you mm. try to stab, it's just going to go through what? I, because it's yeah, it's true. not it's not skin like this. There's no there's no more a uh, physical entity in their in their uh, appearance, right? Yeah. Surprisingly, I think there is some truth to it now. Mm. Mm. 
um, I don't know if it's still there. Yeah. You know, Bida Dari Cemetery. There's a mus- there's oh, a yeah. very big Muslim cemetery. Yeah. Yes. 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 Right. Yeah. You go deep inside. Ah, uh, there's one Pontianak buried there. You know, and they call it the Musang Pontianak. I a went Pontianak there. Pontianak yeah. buried there. Yes. When I was wow. in Sec Two, wow. we heard about it. We went to investigate, and mm. there was this. Uh, in the Muslim Muslim grave, they have just like a, a small little stone. Mm-mm. Now this was buried next to to, to a tree, Mm-mm. and then whole area was barbed wire. Oh, was and then oh. They, they had a sign there, yeah. and then there was this huge stick, right into the ground. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think it was a prank done by anybody. True. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you want to talk about, if you look at the question now, uh, mm. the nail or whatever. Mm-mm. Now let's look at what I went through. During mm-hmm. my army time, we mm-hmm. used to train in cemeteries. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, we used to go hide into the unused graves. Mm. We used to had to take cover. Now, what? Every time we went out, our mm. officers always ask us to carry our, you know, our headdress, the badge. Oh, the yeah. the crest. The crest. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it is shiny. Okay. Mm. All these are afraid of shiny shiny objects. The same principle goes to your nails. Which is a shiny object. Shiny object, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, mm. and we would never leave camp at night, uh, without, without our it. crest. No? Mm. Because at night you're supposed to be fully camouflaged, but the crest we had to use. Mm. Yeah, It's I don't know like... nowadays whether they do it. Um, because nowadays most of the BMT is done in Tekong. That one, yeah. that one is lagi teruk down there. Yeah, Tekong stories are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should never ending. Man. We should do an app just on uh, on <laughs> Tekong. Pulau Tekong. Yeah. yeah, wow. That one you need two chapters. <laughs> 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 Two episode, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we we have a comment from Lina, right? Ah, so Lina's okay. been supporting my work from day one. She's amazing. Wow. Uh, she says here, I've seen my great grandmom talking to the air when I was very young, mm. and she passed on the next day. Oh my god! Yeah, mm. yeah. Wow. So, I I I think a lot of people, you know, they have personal they've seen experience. Their, their loved ones mm. yeah. go through stuff like that. Mm. Uh, do you want to take just a few more questions so we get off air in maybe I, in the next five minutes? I think uh, okay. There's one more question. Uh, will you probably talk about haunted polytechnic as well, such as like Singapore Poly, uh, etc. Also, I have heard some stories about Republic Poly experience too. Do you all have any stories about it? Yeah, the mm. park. At the back of Republic Poly, mm. uh, I can't remember what it's called, but we did a, a like an app there before, and then yeah, mm. that, that place has got a lot of uh, bad energy. Bad energy, yeah. Mm. I I I think the there's a detention center or there's a, nearby a prison nearby, right? Mm. Yeah, uh, where ma- those with minor offenses who are serving their jail term, they spend like the last period there. Mm. Yeah, but I I can't remember exactly what happened, but. Yeah, maybe one day we can do something about polytechnics as well. Mm. So thanks for the suggestion. Mm. Okay, we we just want to uh, ask this question to uh, uh, Chris because we we did ask this question to all our guests who come into mm. our studio. Uh, how do you feel right now? Right now, the energy right now in in our very studio. Mm. Energy is good. I mean, good. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> energy is good. Um, mm. I don't feel spooked. Ah, you know, yeah. everything is calm. I It, mean, we we have a very positive energy because mm-hmm. we are trying to let people know what is out there. Yeah, and do not be afraid. Mm, right. Nice. Yeah. No matter how, yes, there are spirits out mm. there. No matter how you say you don't want to believe it. They are out there, and if you don't believe it, I just hope and pray that you don't encounter one. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Because then True. it'll be the wrong way to start believing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well said. Well said. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, I, I'm just nodding my head, uh, taking cue from you, bro. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! But anyway, we are we we are, we are we are operating at a very spontaneous uh, manner. Uh. Yeah, you know exactly. Where? Because we we know the format of the show. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm just waiting for you. When if, if you have some uh, some more for me to uh, ask, <laughs> or maybe bring the uh, the question into the live show. Ah uh, no, yeah. man. Uh, I'll just sorry. My my brain was like somewhere else for okay. a moment. I just thought mm. I could smell. Bergamot. What's it? Uh, it's like a, an orange scent, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah, but no. Oh no! Uh, I think your mind just playing tricks on you, lah, bro. Of course, yeah. 
Uh. <laughs> yeah, but what's the what's the scent that you use here in the diffuser? Uh, I think I use. I'm not so sure. I'm just using something from the essential oils. Okay. Just put it in. <laughs> coming <laughs> coming from there, lah. Yeah, he has uh, no idea what he's using. <laughs> Very Maybe nice. he put inside. You don't know. He say burger not. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to confuse you, bro. Yeah, thanks, bro. <laughs> okay, I tell you what. Just take one last one. Okay, let's go. Uh, I think we have an, uh, a, another question. Last one. Okay, I felt the last Friday energy, Bukit Bato was kind of nervy though. Uh, and who is this by? Uh, Ahish Pandey. Okay. Hmm. I think she's referring to uh, our last app. I, I I think so. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, last one. Uh, okay. Wait, wait. So many. Okay. SF Berry. Right. Uh, Chris is blessed by all the religion. Indeed. Yes. That's the reason why the ghosts don't disturb when it's with us. Is it true? Yeah. Ah. I, I love that. But then it's not. They don't bless every single one, right? They, I I think what they do is the like logo, uh, uh. they they say that it's blessed. I don't know how they bless. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know whether all religions blessed it, but mm-hmm. um, I mean our officers used to tell us before mm-hmm. uh, that your crest is the one that wards away from all evil. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I've heard that before yeah. too. And they say always keep it on you. Wow. Because you never know what you step on. You never know where you walk. Even in the jungle, there are spirits. Yeah, especially jungles. Huh? Yeah. We talk about jungles. It's never-ending uh, encounters that we can expect. Mm. Yes, because yeah. in the in the seventies, uh, we we didn't have to travel overseas to go to jungles. Mm. We had forests, and I mean, there were thick forests. Yeah, yeah. Right. True. We used to have field camps in there, and guys used to you know go into the bushes mm. to go and do their pee and whatever they wanted to do mm. without saying excuse me, and some of them get lost after that. Mm. Wow. The whole company goes out looking for them, and then you find them slumped somewhere else. I mean, in during in this, my time, yeah. there, there was one guy. Yeah, yeah, and total loss of memory. Loss of memory. Yes, he was wow. like for four or five days. You know, he didn't know who he was, and after that, he slowly came out of it. And you know, he said all he remembered was he went to the bushes, mm-hmm. uh, just went to have a pee, and then he had a huge whack on his head, and mm. that was wow. it. After that, he was slumped. Maybe it serves as a reminder, man. Yeah. Whatever he's going through. That's why it's through. like they yeah. always say, you know, if you go to somewhere that's new to you, you want to excuse yourself. Always excuse yourself. Yeah. In the true. presence of whatever that is there, mm. don't just go there and fire your guns away. No, that's that's not the way. Yeah. yeah. I, I still do it until today, though. Yeah. yeah. Have to respect the place, yeah. even yeah. though it's a foreign place or our first time being in that place. I think we have to respect that place. Uh. Correct. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Definitely, man. Wow, it's been a good episode, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Wow, it keeps getting better and better, man. Wow, yeah. I mean the 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 comment, the, the question, and uh, the experience that we hear from uh, Chris. Wow, it's amazing, man! It's amazing. Yeah, mm. you know, if we can continue talking, though. I think we'll be here like the one or two in the morning. But then I need. Yeah, yeah we, we, can, we can't. We can't. We can't. Can, yeah, yeah. yeah, actually, we what, was half an hour. Almost half an hour overrun yeah. already. Yep, yep, yeah. yep, yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a good problem, though. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Well, you said you wanted to go on until midnight, three o'clock. <laughs> 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 oh, but then no lah. My, my stomach won't allow. No, man. <laughs> then we will need 50 coffees and 50 mee gorengs after yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> then we need to get the viewers to buy more coffees. <laughs> yeah. Then we do a new one mee goreng with mee goreng. butter lembu. That's why lagi shock. <laughs> wow, shock man. Uh, for, uh, for our viewers who are, uh, who are watching live and uh, for our listeners who are listening to this podcast, uh, if you appreciate our content, please do uh, go to the website of uh, Buy Me a Coffee and uh, www.buymeacoffee.com/gfstv to show your kind support. Yeah, man. Uh, any support we get, you know, it's always it, it makes us feel really good. Yeah. You know, um, like. Obviously, you know we're not doing this for for the money, mm. but we're doing this because it's a passion and mm. um, it's something I look forward to like throughout the week. Like, oh, you know, Friday we're gonna be live and we get to talk and uh, we get to disturb yeah. each other. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, man. Like as though like on WhatsApp and video calls not enough, but not, then yeah, not enough, yeah, bro. We get to do it in the studio. I need to see you every every week. Uh, if if can <sighs> every day, uh, bro. 
<laughs> your wife, your wife, going to be jealous of me, no? Oh, she, she might be thankful though. She always says I'm very annoying. I don't understand. <laughs> this, this two like the hantu brothers. Eh? Hantu <laughs> brothers. Eh? <laughs> hey, hey, we should, we should trademark that shit, man. Oh, I, I said the word. Ah, <laughs> back at you, back at you, man. Come on, back at you. <laughs> Go and print T-shirt, the hantu brothers, hantu brothers, man. <laughs> Hantu Brothers Oh nice huh? Nice yeah. oh, okay, Thank okay. you Chris For that okay, uh, no Lovely <laughs> Lovely uh, Aspiration When you print yeah. the t-shirt You give me one also okay? yeah, Definitely <laughs> You'll be the first one yeah. man. Definitely the first one <laughs> Okay Let's say goodbye man Hey yeah man uh, For our viewers And our listeners Thank you so much For tuning in Haunted Hour Live uh, We have uh, our, More episodes uh, In our Upcoming uh, Shows uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look at the screen and try to talk at the same time. I think uh, it, it can't work. Uh. Yeah. Hungry, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, no one, hit it. Yeah, I think we men can't really multitask well. I don't know about Chris, maybe he can. But I certainly can't. That's why I'm not the one like choosing which comments goes up. Yeah. And you know, everything is same, like he's he's with a switcher board and mixer board. Uh, but then he's left-handed, so he's post. Technically, you're supposed to be smart. Yeah, creative. <laughs> <laughs> technically. technically. It's, it's a rumor, I tell you. Okay. Uh, we'd like to thank you for watching Haunted Hour. It's always yeah, a, ble- uh, a blessing. Uh. To me, it's a blessing to be able to be live every Friday. Mm. We'd like to thank Chris for coming to the studio. Thank you, Chris. My pleasure. Yeah, Anytime. We, we definitely want you to, to, to come again. Yay! Yeah, let me go back and think of all the other stuff. Then yeah. I'll have more things in my hand. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. so we will see you next week. If you have an idea yep. of um, what we should talk about or if you want to be on our show, leave mm-hmm. a, a comment. I, I, I will read it either tonight or tomorrow or the day after. But I'll definitely reply to you. Yeah. All right. All right. Signing off from Haunted Hour. I'm Indra Sahib. And I'm Noel Boyd. Good night. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> oh.